Listen to what I'm saying. Your birth, Uncle G, your birth, Akhi, your birth, brother, Akhawat, sisters, your birth was like being born and then being kidnapped and then sold into slavery. Wallahi, that's the state of the human being. That is the state of the human being. Where even the kuffar, the non-Muslim philosophers said that this was a concept called thrownness. You're just thrown into reality with no choice. Because you never chose that you're going to be a black man. Did you choose you're going to be black? No. Did you choose that you're going to be Kashmiri, Mirpuri, or whatever you are, Punjabi? Oh, Punjabi, yeah? Or whatever, you didn't choose this. Did you choose that you're going to be white? Did you choose that you're going to be gorgeous? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Yeah? I never chose that I was going to be Greek that looks like a Pakistani. Yeah? But Wallahi, think about this. Did you have a choice? You didn't even choose that you were going to be a man. Akhawat sisters, you didn't even choose that you were going to be female. You had absolutely no choice. And by the way, you had no choice concerning your parents. No choice at all. Even your DNA, the biologists talk about that we have DNA. Even your DNA, you had no choice in your DNA. The thing that really shapes your biological makeup. No choice. Zero. Finished. Khalas. And then we think we're free. And we think we're free. We didn't choose our parents, we had no choice. We didn't choose the social economic environment where our parents came from. We didn't choose the geography. We didn't choose our lineage. We didn't choose where we came from. We didn't choose our color, our gender, our size, our shape. None of these things. And we think we're free. Which is really ironic that we're living in a, in a society that prides itself over being free. Right? It prides itself over having independent freedom. I can do whatever I want, dress however I want, talk however I want, you know, look however I want, spend my money on whatever I want. That's the thing that makes the society pride itself, take pride in itself. And yet if you go to somewhere as simple as high school, you'll find a bunch of kids that are dressed almost exactly the same. They're dressed almost exactly the same. All the hip hop kids, are, they look the same. All the goth kids look the same. All the emo kids look the same. It's almost like they go through a uniform. And even the way they talk has to be a certain way to fit in with that crowd. And if you don't fit in with that crowd, then you're, you're, out, you're an outcast. And so when you look at that, I don't, I don't see freedom when I see that. What I see is cultural slavery. This young man or this young woman can't even make that decision of how to look or how to talk or how to walk for themselves. They have to conform to what is going on around them. And sometimes it's willing, sometimes you submit that that is the better way to live. That is the better way to dress or to talk. Or that's the better thing to do with my time. That's the kind of music I want to be addicted to. Or these are the kinds of practices I'll do. Whatever, that's one conscious decision a person makes, that that's the life to live. And sometimes it's even pressured. I've met Muslim teenage kids that have come to me in private and when you look at them, they're like, man, this, is this guy in a gang or something? And they'll come to you in private and they'll be crying because they say, I don't want to dress like this. I don't want to look like this. But if I don't, I'll get beat up at school. That's cultural slavery. That's a form of slavery. But it's not just about the youth and their, you know, whether they become enslaved to musical culture or entertainment culture and they want to be just like whatever, you know, that famous athlete or musician or actor is. It's, it's beyond that. It's even for older generations. For our older generations, this kind of cultural slavery takes a different texture. It takes a different tone. You have, you did things a certain way in your country or in your society. You, were, you saw that your entire life. You want to make sure your family and your children will do things exactly the same way. Whether that's good for them or not doesn't matter. This is how we do things. And the reason we have these issues is because we adopt another social norm. So we're enslaved by the social masses, by the influentials in our, in our culture. So look at this, what we've discussed. You didn't choose your parents, you didn't choose your biology, you didn't choose your society that you're enslaved to as well, you didn't choose social biological conditioning, you didn't choose your DNA, you didn't choose your gender, your color, your parenting, your lineage, your, your society, your nationality, you didn't, and, and we're enslaved to our nafs as well, to our carnal, beastial aspects of mankind. So we're slaves. We're slaves. This is it. The only real freedom you have if you shoot yourself. Honestly. 
Honestly, that's the only act of real freedom. Even the Western philosophers would write essays on, on suicide. Arthur Schopenhauer wrote an essay on suicide. David Hume, he wrote an essay on suicide. I think some of them really understood the only act of freedom is to kill yourself. That's the state of mankind without purpose. Forget the drink and the alcohol and the fun and games they have. You, you go underneath that, you scratch the surface, they're just slaves. We're all slaves. But how do we find true liberty? How does the soul, the ruh, the ruh, how does it find liberty? And interestingly, the word ruh is linked to the word raha, which means serenity, liberty. And the only way to escape from this slavery is to become a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the real bloke. That's the real man. Not the man who's enslaved to his desires, the man who's enslaved to society, the man who's enslaved to things that he didn't even choose. So this is the ultimate act of liberation. This is the ultimate act of being a true human being. In my humble opinion, if someone knows this and they don't start worshipping Allah, how can you consider yourself a human being? How could you? Do you see the unique spin on this? Because we think when we move away from religion, we're actually free. We think when we move away from religion, we're free. When we move away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're actually free, but it's actually the opposite. When you enslave yourself to Allah, you remove the shackles of all of these types of slavery.